All right, so today we're going to talk about um, what is probably one of the more common questions after you've lifted your Pathfinder, which is um, how do I fit uh, bigger tires onto my Pathfinder? And so um, you'll often hear people say, oh, what are the offset on your rims? You know, I'll see that on Facebook, on, on Instagram a lot. People ask for the offset. That's not the number you're looking for. So what you're actually looking for when you're looking at fitting bigger tires is first, what size tires are you trying to fit? If you're trying to fit over a 31 inch tire, then this discussion is gonna to apply to you. If you're just trying to fit a 31 inch tire, go ahead, put whatever wheels you want on it, honestly. Um, it's when you're trying to go larger than that 31 inch number that you're gonna run into uh, issues if you don't get the correct wheels or wheel spacers. Um, okay, and so the reason that is, is because of the distance between the hub and the strut plate. See, the rim takes up space on this side of the disc brake, on this side of the brake, as well as over here on that side of the hub. And as you get a taller and taller tire, it gets closer and closer to touching the strut plate on stock wheels. Um, and so if you get up to or just over a 31 inch tire, you're probably going to rub on the strut plate, which is going to be really annoying and not good. But if you can clear it with proper backspacing, um, this is a static distance because this plate goes down and so does uh, the hub. So once you've gotten your backspacing done correctly, your tire will never, ever, ever, ever hit this plate. Um, that is a static distance. It doesn't change no matter how the suspension is cycling. Um, so if you're trying to fit 32 inch tires, the or 33s, 34s, 35s, whatever you're trying to fit <clears throat> on your R50 Pathfinder, the number that you wanna shoot for is 3.75 inches of backspacing. Um, I have seen people fit 32s on four inches of backspacing. Um, and if you want, you can shoot for that. But the safest go-to number is 3.75. Um, if you get a four inch backspacing, it might touch or it might be really, really, really close to the strut. And even though that is a static distance, it might not uh, feel very good to have, you know, <clears throat> less than a quarter inch of clearance between the tire and the strut. Um, so a lot of people, um, this is by and far, by and large, the most used backspacing number to safely clear tires. There are very few people running four inch uh, backspacing to clear those 32 inch, 33 inch tires. Um, so how do we calculate backspacing? Backspacing is your rim width plus one inch. So if we take, for example, the stock uh, 02 to 04 LE wheels, it's that width, that eight inch plus one, that's nine inches. You take the rim width, you divide it by two. So now we have 4.5 and then you add the offset. So these have positive offset. Um, so, but that's in millimeters, it's 20 millimeters of offset. So we have to convert. So we add 20 millimeters over 25.4 millimeters Per inch. So we get 4.5 inches plus about 0.75 inches equals a backspacing of 5.25 inches, which means we would need one and a half inch wheel spacers to get to that 3.75 inch backspacing. Um, but honestly, most people when they lift it will go to aftermarket wheels. So here's probably what you're gonna have the easiest time finding on aftermarket wheels. You're gonna find a rim with a width of eight inches, and you're gonna find it with negative 19 millimeters of offset. You can find that. Uh, I have 15 inch, 15 by eight, negative 19s. Uh, 16 by eight, negative 19 is also very popular, but this ends up with our same eight plus one, four and a half, and then 19 millimeters is about three quarters of an inch. So four and a half 
plus our negative offset, so minus that three quarters of an inch, that is a 3.75 backspacing. Now on an eight inch rim, you can fit pretty wide tires. Um, it's a pretty good width to have. So that is what I recommend. You either get 15 by eight or 16 by eight, but it's nine, negative 19 millimeters of offset. And that'll be perfect um, for fitting 32s or 33s, lifted or not, it doesn't matter, right? This distance is static. It doesn't matter whether you're lifted or not to clear that strut, uh, you need this backspacing. Um, and obviously skinnier tires will help with that, but ultimately backspacing first and then tire width. Uh, I have 11 and a half wide tires and they fit just fine and so do 12 and a half wides. Um, I've seen that before too. So regardless of that, um, that's what you're looking for uh, in terms of backspacing. Uh, the other reason why I would advocate for aftermarket wheels with this 3.75 backspacing is the ability to fit different kinds of manual hubs. If you do the lift wheels and tires all at the same time, and then you do manual hubs, um, you can fit cheaper hubs or just the hubs of your choice. It opens up your options. You don't have to go with like rugged ridge just to clear that center cap. Um, and part of that is that most aftermarket wheels will have a center bore of 108 millimeters, whereas a Pathfinder center bore is 100 millimeters. Um, so that also helps open up options for manual hubs, line fit with plenty of clearance. Um, one thing about this is that some people, if they go up to the 108 millimeter center bore on most aftermarket wheels, they'll say get hub centric rings. Um, I don't have hub centric rings and I've been fine. I've had it that way for about a year now. Um, just torque down your lug nuts and you should be good. But if you want peace of mind, you can always get uh, hub centric rings. But that's how wheel backspacing works. Um, that's a common setup for the LE rims. Uh, if you have different rims than that, look at your backspacing specs, see what either wheel spacers you will need for those 32 inch tires, um, <clears throat> or see uh, what you can find in aftermarket rims. And the only thing I would add to that is for the rear, um, what you're going to want to consider is the more backspacing you add, the harder it is to tuck a tire. Um, and so if you're on a two or three inch lift, like I am with 3.75 backspacing, my 11 and a half inch tires just barely don't touch my uh, fenders in the rear. Um, honestly, I probably should have gotten a skinnier 32 on a 16 inch rim, um, but I have what I have. And with that about two to two and a half inch lift in the rear, I have just enough um, tire clearance or clearance for uh, flexing the vehicle out and not hitting the rims. But I also have two inch extended bump stops. Um, so that's probably why I'm not hitting the inner wall of the fender uh, rubbing up against the body of it. Um, but so that's something to consider is if you do 3.75 backspacing and then you add wheel space or you do something like that, um, you're not gonna be able to tuck tires in the rear very well, which is why the one advantage to adding a wheel spacer to one of these stock rims is that you can mess around with the backspacing in the rear so that you can still tuck tires really well. Um, because in the front, you're not really worried about tucking tires. There's not a lot of up travel, especially if you're lifted. Um, and so it is nice to be able to have less backspacing in the rear because then you can tuck tires pretty perfectly. Um, so that's an advantage of going spacers front um, and keeping your stock wheels. But either way, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, go ahead and like and comment and subscribe. If you got any questions, I'd love to hear them. Um, but that's wheel backspacing. That's how to clear 32s. And that's how to tuck tires in the rear. Thanks, guys.